Good morning, everyone. It is time for Sunday school. Prayer. We are going to pray. Father, save me and my family from destiny destroyers in Jesus' name. Father, save me and my family from destiny destroyer in the mighty name. Destiny destroyers in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are free. Today we are looking at lesson four, destiny, destiny. But it we are looking at what we discussed last. We discussed uh, sexual, sexual vices, and we had a memory verse from First Corinthians six nineteen, and we had two lesson outlines: some sexual vices such as fornication, adultery, pornography, rape. And we discuss the consequences and way out. Consequences, destruction, sexual transmitted diseases. Limits, it limits the power of the Holy Spirit. Then what are the ways out? Confess our sins unto God. Ask the Lord to give us a pure mind. According to Philippians 4, 3. Then the summary that we should flee sexual vices. Because they destroy us, they destroy our destiny. And we concluded that we should not give our body to sexual vices. Give it to the Lord by holy presentation. And I pray that God will continue to help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we are looking at destiny destroyers. Our Bible passage is taken from 1 Kings 11, 1 to 11. 1 Kings 11, 1 to 11. Uh, 11. I read, but King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Etites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto this in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God. Out of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of Zidonias. And after Milcon, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did his, David his father. Then Solomon built a place for Kermot, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and Malek, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, with burnt incense and sacrifice unto their gods. And because it turned of it unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning this to go after other gods. But it was with the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I had commanded thee. I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. And that was what happened to Solomon at the end of the day. Let's look at what happened in this passage. God gave Solomon everything. He had already established kingdom, but Solomon disobeyed God. That is the major thing that he did. He, do, he disobeyed God Almighty. He married as many wives as he could. He clave unto them. And what happened to him at the end of the day? They turned his heart against his own God Almighty. And he began to worship their gods to the extent that he built houses for them. Out of worship, he worshiped, he made sacrifice. So his heart was no longer perfect with God. He abandoned his God for man made gods. Then he began to work out evil. If you look at verses 5 to 8, 
He began to work, work out evil. He built houses for the gods. Then he, lo he no longer yielded to God Almighty. Despite God's warning, he refused to obey him. Then what is the consequence? Or what are the consequences of what happened to him? He destroyed the kingdom established for his family. And that, we can say that that was his destiny. Because God had already established the kingdom for him. He did not go to any battle. He did not go to any battle. He was just to come and enjoy what had been built for him. But what happened to him? Because of disobedience, he destroyed everything. Even to the family lineage, none of them could become king thereafter. So I pray that will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Then we now go to our memory verse. What does the memory verse say? In Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thought that I think towards you, said the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you what expected end. This is God Almighty talking. And three things that we can get from this memory verse. What are they? The plans of peace for you. The plans of peace for me well be then he said number two no evil will be for you you were not created for destruction god did not create us to be destroyed he wanted us to enjoy but sin had separated us from the love of the father then to have an expected end that is to give us a future and a hope in order to fulfill our destiny and i pray that you fulfill our destiny in jesus name then we now go to the introduction what is destiny? We've been talking about destiny destroyers. What is destiny? A de destiny, according to Collins Dictionary, a person is destiny is everything that happens to them during their lifetime, including what will happen in the future, especially when it's considered to be controlled by someone or something else. Then what is destroyer? Or what is a destroyer? Or what are destroyers? These are forces that will not make one fulfill one's destiny. They could be human beings, um, spiritual forces, self-destructive activities that we engage in. These things will not make us to achieve our destinies. They could be internal or external forces. Praise the Lord. So our lesson introduction. Destiny is God's purpose for a man's life. It is a divinely prepared destination. It is the totality of God's counsel for a person and what God has decided concerning a person even before conception. According to Jeremiah 1.5, God told Jeremiah that before he was born, he was formed, he knew him. He knew what he had already prepared for him and what he will be. As good as it is, at several points in life, it still depends on one's attitude and agreement with God. God has a prepared destination for us and we must surrender totally to him so as to avoid destiny destroyer that may want to destroy God's plan for our lives. I pray that we avoid destiny destroyers in Jesus' name. So God has a prepared plan for every one of us. So it is now left for us to key in into that um, preparation into that purpose in order for us to fulfill our destiny. So we are looking at two lesson outlines for this topic. The topic is still destiny destroyers. We are looking at two lesson outlines. The first one, some destiny destroyers and is in three parts. The part two will be talking about the destiny destroyers. Then the part two will tell us how we can fulfill our destiny. Then number three, from destiny destroyers factors to destiny fulfilling factors. So what are the who or what are the destroyers or what are the forces? Number one, we have lack of knowledge. Lack of, lack of knowledge is a destiny destroyer. If we look at the book of Hosea 4, 6. Hosea 4, 6. 
say my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We, what we know, some people say what we don't know cannot kill me. But we need to know much more. We need to move from one level to the other. We don't have to be static. We have to be dy dynamic. We have to change. We have to move in order to reach our goal. Praise the Lord. So we need to seek knowledge. We need to read. We need to seek counsel. We need to go to God and ask questions. We need to ask God, what do you have for me? What are your for me? Praise the Lord. So look at pursuit of vanity. Uh, vanity. Solomon pursued so much of vanity until he became a complete backslider. Privileges of wealth and lack of self-control ruined his what? His destiny. He had everything. But he was just sitting enjoying life to the extent that he forgot God. To the extent that he forgot the plan of God for his family, for himself and for his family. To the extent that he ruined his future. I pray in his name. Let's look at this. 2, 10 to 11. Not for them. I withheld heart from any joy for I to rejoice in all my neighbor. This was my portion of my neighbor. Then I on and my aunt had wrought and on the labor field, all was what vanity, vexation of son. For him to have told us that you can see that he went through. Praise the Lord. Lack of faith is also a destiny destroyer. What does God have for you? You should hold on to what God has for us. What has God said in his promises? Don't listen to yesterday or what somebody or some fears somewhere. Say, ah, this person will not make it. We have seen so many people that they've told that they will not make it. And they made it. Because they went to, back to God. Let us hold on to faith. Let us believe in the word of God and his promises. Then pride. Pride is an excessive self-esteem. It is when you are filled with an exciting sense of credit due to yourself. Pride is a sin and it leads to what? Loss and destroy, destruction. I know it all. I know everything. I have everything. I'm good. I don't need this and um, cancel. I don't need anybody. Do you understand? We feel that we know it all. We are above everything. So that can lead to destiny destroyer because where you know, that is the, your limit. People know more than you know. So when we are humble, we gain more. We know more. We are, so, we are exposed to a lot of things that can enhance our life and make us to fulfill our destiny. Then sinful, sinful lifestyles, sins are conf not confessed are forsaken, are dangerous because they provoke God to anger. A man who is living in sin cannot fulfill his destiny or attain destination which God has promised. Even sin can cut our life short. We can see what happened to um, Solomon and others. We'll see them later. Then anger. Anger is another destiny destroyer. Uncontrolled emotional outburst has led many people out of God's purpose for their lives. Then prayerlessness. Prayerlessness can cause the enemy to take advantage of man's destiny. In Matthew 13, 25, But while man, men slept, his enemy came and sowed tithes among the wheat, and he went away. How do we live our life? We just go about morning after evening, come back, sleep, wake up. We are not careful about our life. We are not determined about our life. We are not praying. And the word of God admonishes us that we should pray without, without season. So then the part B of it is what are the factors that can make us to fulfill our destiny? So we still go back to the opposite of what we have learned. And that is knowledge. We should seek knowledge. We should seek knowledge. We should be content with what we have. That is contentment. We should be satisfied with what we have now. 
Don't live above your means. Then faith, you should have faith, have faith in God, hold on to his promises, hold on to his word. Humility, come down. No matter who you are, what you are, you need to be humble before God and before man, and God will raise you. Then holiness unto God, live holy. Live holy so that you can commune or communicate with God. You can see God can make you to see your vision and to make you achieve or fulfill your destiny in life. Meekness and prayerfulness. Prayerfulness. We should be prayerful, pray without season. Then we now move to lesson outline two. Biblical instances. Biblical instances of those whose destinies were destroyed. Number one, Solomon, where we have read, we see what happened to him. He pursued vanity. And at the end of the day, he made us know that everything is what vanity. Then we look at Samson, disobedience and love for strange women too, brought him die, uh, down and he died with his enemies. Then Judas Iscariot, you know what happened to him? Greed, love of money, he betrayed his own Lord. Yes, it, it betrayed God Almighty and Jesus. And what happened to him? He did not fulfill destiny. Then Demas, let's look at Second Timothy. Demas, Second Timothy, four ten. Four ten. For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Thrissus to Galatia, Titus unto Damatia. He forsook um, Paul, Apostle Paul, he was to be one of his disciples, but he left him because of what? Love of the world, love of the world, love of, fle of the flesh, love of the eyes, and pride of life and he went away. So he's not counted among the disciples of Apostle Paul. Then we also look at Geazi. Geazi. What happened to Geazi? Greed. Greed. He lost his destiny. He ought to have been or uh, accepted double portion of Elisha. But what he went after money. He went after bribe and he, 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 his destiny was destroyed to the extent that his generations were caused they became leprous. Praise the Lord that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Then we also talk to this um, Reuben. Reuben is the firstborn of Jacob. What happened to him? Lost of the eyes. He slept with his stepmother. Somebody that, that was his mother. He slept with his father's wives. And he was, he was what? He was cursed. Then Achan. Achan also disobeyed God's instruction in Joshua 7 24 to 25 he did not only die all the family members died on the same day the sin of a man can cause a whole generation not to fulfill their destinies I pray this will not be our portion in Jesus name we can see all of these people what happened to them they disobey God that is the primary um, um, uh, sin they disobeyed God and see what happened to them, and not only to them, even to their generation. Let's look at Achan. Achan could have heeded Joshua's instruction not to touch an accursed thing, but he did not obey. Those things, temporary things that we look on to, this thing will satisfy me. What about what will satisfy you tomorrow that will last longer than what you have today? Achan should not have stolen, but what happened is stole. And he died. The generation too died. Achan should have faced the assignment of fighting the war, but it was after material things. Achan should have trusted God for raiment, for provisions, but he thought that by his power, he could get all these things by himself. But those things, he could not enjoy them. He died eventually. So, in summary, students should avoid destiny destroyers. We've been told the factors 
that can make us to move from destiny destroyer to fulfilling destiny. We told that we should seek knowledge. We should be content with what we have. We should have faith. We should be humble. We should live holy. We should be meek and we should be prayerful. So in conclusion, do only those things which the Bible supports and you are on your way to what? To fulfill destiny. Do those things. Seek God. Obey God. Trust Him. Depend on His word and on His promises and your destiny will be fulfilled. So what are those things that are destined, uh, that can destroy destiny? We've told us pride, lack of knowledge, lack of faith, pursuit of vanity, running at a scatter for nothing, anger, prayerlessness, and sinful life. All these things will not make us to do what? To fulfill our destiny. So we thank God for where he has taken us today. We pray that we'll be walking towards fulfilling our destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have any question, please you can send your question to our blog and you'll be, they will be attended to. Praise the Lord. Our closing prayer, let's say, Father, deliver me from destiny destroyers in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it may be, be it human, be it um, other forces, spiritual, a physical, ex external or internal, that God Almighty should deliver us from this, day, from this day henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be, so will it be, it is so in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. God will help us this period. We shall overcome and come together to celebrate with great and mighty testimonies in Jesus' name. Oh,